considered the kings of the air, the best career passers in college history. Mark Herman, the slender rifleman from Purdue. Stanford's John Elway, he of the quick feet and quicker release. There was Jim McMahon, the BYU great who was number two. And alone at the top at the start of this year stood Duke's Ben Bennett. And then along came the crown prince named Flutie. Too small, said the critics, as he pushed by Herman. Too fragile, said others, as he scrambled and dodged and weaved his way past Elway. Always a criticism, and yet up the ladder he rose, past McMahon and even Bennett to number one, the top career passer in college history. Electrifying, charismatic, and devastating. He is admired by teammates and fans alike. And when it's all said and done, he'll most likely leave this game with something the others never captured, the Heisman Trophy. Flutie and his Boston College teammates face an angry Miami Hurricane team who have a pretty fair country quarterback themselves by the name of Kozar, Bernie Kozar, tall and strong arm. This sophomore signal caller can throw with the best of them, and if the Eagles are not careful, Kozar will take them deep for six. With their talented core of receivers, the Canes are a threat from any point on the field. Flutie versus Kozar, a duel at high noon between two of college football's top quarterbacks as Boston College beat the Hurricanes of Miami, live from the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida. CBS Sports presents College Football. Live from the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida, it's the Eagles of Boston College versus the Miami Hurricanes. Today's game is sponsored by the 1985 Jetta, the new affordable German road car from Volkswagen. The U.S. Army, a place to be all you can be. And by Liberty Mutual Insurance Company, we're going to be there for you. So it is Boston College against Miami, and this is not a Chamber of Commerce weather day in South Florida. It has been raining hard throughout most of the day, and of course, Doug Flutie and Bernie Kosar will be affected by that wind that has been gusty. Kosar, the young man who is now getting ready for his confrontation against Doug Flutie. A year ago as a freshman, he led the Hurricanes to a national championship. And across the way in the Boston College locker room, Doug Flutie, who could be just a week away from earning the Heisman Trophy, is getting ready now to bring the Eagles out for their battle here against the Hurricanes in the Orange Bowl. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. I am Brent Musburger, and what a confrontation this should be. Boston College, of course, headed for the Cotton Bowl, where they will probably be taking on Texas, although the Longhorns still have to get past Baylor and Texas A&M. As for the Hurricanes of Miami, they're angry, I said earlier. That's because they were humiliated a couple of weeks ago by Maryland. Opened up a 31 to nothing lead and then lost the game 42 to 40. And as a result, instead of going to the Orange Bowl, where they had an opportunity to defend their national championship, they have had to settle for the Fiesta Bowl. So many confrontations today. A pleasure to be working with Eric Parsegan and Pat Hayden. And Pat, we have got two coaches here who have done superb jobs. Well, Jack McNeil has had a re remarkable success at Boston College. Two years ago, he led them to their first bowl game in 40 years. Last year, they won the Lambert Trophy, signifying the best team in the East. This year, they'll be playing on January 1st, and they win another Lambert Trophy. He's done two things in tandem, which are difficult to do in college football, Brent. He has won, and he's won so in an exciting fashion. Now, Jimmy Johnson, well, he's had an ex exceptional year at Miami as well. He came here under adverse circumstances, inherited Howard Schnellenberger's staff, didn't have a spring practice. They're defending national championships team. They've won eight games against very stiff competition. All right, Pat, I look forward to hearing what you're going to say about Flutie and Kosar, and I want to know what the coach has got to say about how we're going to stop these two quarterbacks, and we'll have that story when we continue after this commercial and a message from your local stations. We are back live at the Orange Bowl, and you know, back in the 40s, a coach by the name of Frank Leahy took the Boston College Eagles to one bowl after another. Now it is Jack Bicknell and Doug Flutie who are taking this team to the Cotton Bowl. Position this afternoon, the Hurricanes of Miami, the defending national champions, who of course will not repeat. Their coach a year ago was Howard Snellenberger. Now it is.
is Jimmy Johnson, who is directing this football team. And you know, you're going to see one of the most exciting players ever in college football. That is five foot nine inch Doug Flutie. What can we expect? But don't forget the three quarters. Don't forget the three quarters. He's very upset with you. Would you be surprised if I said Doug Flutie was going to throw the ball a lot today? What Doug Flutie likes to do is line up in a lot of different formations, send people in motion, drop back and find the open man. He's thrown the 13 different receivers this year, and today he's going to spread the ball around a lot. Reminds me a lot of the offense we all used to play in sixth grade out in the front yard, but he gets the ball in the end zone. And uh, now how do you uh, stop Doug Flutie? Well, when I found out that was my assignment, I immediately thought about the Miami coaches, the defensive coaches and players, and I thought, well, maybe we ought to know their religious preference because if you're a Catholic, you can say a Hail Mary and a Protestant and our father. <laughs> but on a more serious note, I think Jim Johnson, the Hurricane coach, put it pretty well. He says, we can't stop Flutie. We've got to slow him down. And how do they plan to do that? They're going to stay in a three deep, not to give the big play. They're going to try to hide their coverages if they possibly can to confuse him. And out of their seven-man front, they're going to rush four but they'll be different people. They're not going to blitz a whole lot, and they have one special defense that they call the cop, where number 58 Fleming will mirror Flutie, particularly when he's flushed out of the pocket. We'll see how that works. All right, there's the mirror man down there. Now, what about Big Kozar? What can we expect from him? Well, Brent, when you've seen Flutie scramble and use different formations, Bernie Kozar takes a different approach but gets the same kind of results. He's going to come up in one or two basic formations. Watch his eyes because he's going to autobize an awful lot. He wants to get the ball to his wide receivers early in the football game. When they double them, to autobize, get the ball to his tight end, Willie Smith, who's caught 62 passes this year. And, Errol, what about the B.C. defense? Well, it's amazing the similarity between the two defensive philosophies. Philosophies. They're going to stay in a three deep. They've used some two deep and burned by it. They're going to stay in a three deep. They're going to try to camouflage and hide their coverages if they can. They're not going to blitz a whole lot. And they have one special deal. They're going to knock their two tackles down over the guards to draw the block and put their great nose man, Mike Ruth, right over Sinclair, the Hurricane Center, and try to get the Kosar. We'll follow that as the game unfolds to see whether or not it works. All right, so throw another log on the fire. Pull up your favorite chair. Here comes Doug Flutie. We got excitement coming your way from the Orange Bowl in Miami in just a moment. The Boston College Eagles and the Miami Hurricanes are set to begin in the Orange Bowl. Miami leading the series, and the home team has won each meeting, and the Hurricanes are favored here this afternoon. And again, the weather could be an enormous factor in this game. It has rained hard all day, and that gusting wind will be the problem for Kosar and Flutie. Flutie will have the ball first. Miami will kick it off, but that is Mark Seeley who will put it deep. in this situation frequently you have to have another player hold it because of that gusting wind. Seelig wants to try it one more time without somebody holding the ball. and Tyrone Taylor are set back deep for the Eagles and fielded back in the end zone by Williams. Boston College, of course, is led by the most exciting player in the college game today, Doug Flutie. Strahan is a very dependable performer, and Troy Stratford has been nursing a hamstring injury. Kelvin Martin, an explosive receiver. Phelan is Flutie's roommate and his favorite target. Now Casparillo goes in to replace the injured Gieselman in their starting lineup. Flutie to put it up on first down. Completes his first pass to the far side, and he hits Phelan. Now, these are the men who will set up front. Sean Regent for the Eagles. He is alongside Mark Bardwell, and the coach's son, Jack Bicknell. He is the center on this team. Very dependable guard, and perhaps the toughest of their offensive linemen is Mark McDonald. He is an All-American candidate. It is second and five for Flutie and the Eagles. They put Bell in motion. Dumps off to the side to him. And immediately, Doug Flutie opens up with two completed passes right here. 
John McVeigh made that stop. And speaking of the defense, these are the men. Julio Cortez, a very gritty performer. He's next to Jerome Brown, who's quick. Morris, the hard hitter of the bunch. And Fagan is a very, very dependable. He's probably the leader of that group. And Moss is only a sophomore. He has a bright future. Bernie Kosar said, generally, I don't pay much attention to what the other team's offense is doing. But he said, I just want to stand on the sideline and enjoy Doug Flutie. Flutie now with a third and one yard. And he's got the first down. Handing it off to his running back, Troy Stratford. Now the rest of the defense, Bruce Fleming is at linebacker. McVeigh was in on one of the hits already this afternoon. Reggie Sutton, he is one of their leaders, along with Tolbert Bain. Fullington has intercepted four passes this year, and Calhoun returns from an injury. We've seen three different plays from Boston College in three different formations, just what Doug Flutie wanted to do at the beginning of the game. Complete again. Scott Eiselman. We talked about how Doug Flutie likes to spread the ball around to Brent. We've seen him so throw the ball to Phelan once. He threw the ball to a back. And now he's going to find his big tight end, Gieselman, number 83. Again, he is right in the pocket. He's throwing over defensive linemen. Gieselman, the tight end, has been a big factor in their offense. The tight end position for Boston College has caught 42 passes. So Flutie wants to spread the ball around, get the ball to as many receivers, and his tight end is going to be prominent today. Set in the eye formation this time. Two wide receivers out to Flutie's left. Drops it off to Stratford. Short of midfield at about the 48-yard line. Era, anything defensively that the Hurricanes are doing differently right now against Flutie? Well, no. The thing that is really uh, different here is that the Boston College team is really stretching the defense. You can't quite see it from this angle here, but they're stretching it clear across the field. And of course, he's looking downfield. They're covered, and he just dumps the ball off to his outlet man. It's a little slip screen here. They're really putting pressure on the secondary of the Hurricanes. Left hash mark for Flutie this time. And again, he has thrown it complete to the far side, and that is still another first down. Don't you like the way Boston College likes to come out and establish the run? <laughs> he's thrown every down. Well, that's what we expected from Doug Flutie. Regardless of the weather conditions, he's going to come out and throw the football. Martin is terribly explosive. Ten more yards on the game. And he has come back home to the state of Florida. First down, the ball is at the Miami 42-yard line for Flutie. The tailback. Right straight ahead with Bell. Penalty flag is down. You see, this is good running on this particular play. As you watch, the defenders are in good position. This is our standard defense that they're going to use with their three deep. There's a great move put on right there. I can't see right from there who missed the tackle in there. Nothing wrong with the defense, just excellent running. But it, it was set up a number of passes that Boston College set up before. They threw five straight times before they ran the ball. And anytime a defense is concerned about a Doug Flutie and throwing, the run is going to be there, particularly draw type of plays and traps where the defense is a little bit soft. Flank to Flutie's left. Strahan is the setback. Flutie to throw again, and he's got it complete to Gieselman. They are short of a first down. Down to the 33, and again it is John McVeigh, the linebacker who is in on the stop for the Hurricanes. The key so far here, Brent, has been that Doug Flutie's got excellent protection from his off offensive line. Now watch what's going to happen here. He's going to drop back. The offensive line's got those arm outs. There's nobody there blocking Flutie's vision. Gieselman, again the tight end, finds an open area there in the coverage. Miami is using a lot of man-for-man -man coverage on the short routes underneath, and if you continue to do that, this is the kind of day that Flutie's going to have. Second and short, and Casparilla has checked in at tight end. Flutie with Martin, touchdown, Boston College.
said, Coach, we got to love the way BC establishes that run <laughs> and goes out yeah, after right. a team. Don't you love that? You used to do that, didn't you, Era? Come out yeah, like this? Exactly. Yeah, uh -huh. I ran the ball, <laughs> but I didn't have a flutie all the time. I understand. <laughs> Kevin Snow adds the extra point. Boston College moves 84 yards in eight plays. Well, this is the first throw to Kelvin Martin. Remember, Brent, what makes Flutie so difficult to defend, he's thrown the ball all over the place. We've seen Phelan catch the ball. Gieselman caught a couple passes on the drive. And now Kelvin Mer uh, Martin, their big receiver, catches the ball for the end zone. Good protection here for Doug Flutie once more. But again, the key here, great protection and a change up in the receivers. Now we come back. We'll watch Bernie Kosar go to work at 7-0 B.C. Back in the Orange Bowl, where the Eagles strike the first time they touch the ball. Now it's Kosar's serve coming up as Snow prepares to kick it off for B.C. And one of the deep men for Miami is number 21. He's on your all-name team, <laughs> J.C. Pennant. Oh. I don't make it up. There he is. Take a look at the error. You see the circle flyer is Fullington, the freshman safety man. He watched, he's got a habit of coming up to support. He starts back, he's supposed to take the middle third. Now he comes back up, and Bain, the left corner man, is beaten with no support from Fullington. The error was made by number 19. Brent, I'll tell you what, I'm awful happy that error is in charge of defense today because I don't think there's going to be much. <laughs> we'll wait and see now. <laughs> Hang on, Pat. You haven't done a very good job yet. <laughs> Kosar to throw on first down. Incomplete. He has thrown 23 touchdown passes this year. And here's the freshman who steps in for the injured Highsmith, Melvin Bratton. Very versatile runner is Daryl Oliver. And now the wide receivers, the strength of the offense along with the quarterback, Stanley Shakespeare. And Eddie Brown, a possible number one as far as the pros are concerned. And Willie Smith, who is a tight end, has caught 62 passes. Smith is set to Kosar's right. Here come High, and then Oliver moves out of it. Second and ten. Incomplete. Beautiful defense on the play by Neil Eitan, number 43. This was an audible by Bernie Kozar here. He felt he could get Daryl Oliver down the middle. He's done this in the past. He had a couple big plays against Maryland two weeks ago in the same kind of audible. Daryl Oliver out of the backfield. He's got tremendous speed, but you're going to see number 43, Eitan, right there, who made a very good recovery because he was guarding Eddie Brown, but the ball was in the air a little bit too long. Allowed Eitan to come over and make a play. Third and... Penalty marker is down. And it was thrown by the umpire right into the middle of that line where holding frequently takes place as they were trying to offer Kosar a little extra protection. Now the rest of the Hurricane offense in the line, Paul Berticelli out of Miami. He works next to a fifth-year senior, Mike Moore. Now, Sinclair, the center, must handle one of the best nose guards in football. That is Ruth of Boston College. Alvin Ward and Dave Heffernan on the other side. Heffernan, a very intelligent leader of that offensive line. And as a result of that holding, it will be third and 20, and the ball will be marked down at the Miami 13-yard line. I mentioned at the top of the show, Brent, watch Bernie Kosar's eyes. He's a very, very intelligent quarterback. Both of these are, but he audibilizes more than most quarterbacks in college football. Oh, 30, 35 percent of the time, he's going to try to pick apart that defense. Once Brown jumps up and makes a spectacular grab, but was he inbounds? I'm not so he sure. Was out. That, excuse me, Brent. I'm not so sure I would have taken that uh, penalty because you gave Kosar another opportunity. 
and uh, he almost pulled it off. Here we see from an end zone shot. One of the things that Boston College is doing is that they're camouflaging their coverage as well, particularly Pereira. And he almost goes up the sideline here. He steps out of bounds, apparently, and just missed getting the first down. Let's take another look at it. Remember in college football, just one foot has to come down. Eddie Brown catches the ball, and it's clearly out of bounds. The official was right there, and Miami will punt. Rick Tootin will punt, and there is Martin set to return it. He is the man who scored the touchdown for Boston College. He slips one tackler, but not the second. And Doug Flutie will have it for the second time at the 45 after that 45-yard punt and a three-yard return. Can you guarantee this furnace will save fuel? Guarantee? Guaranteed. <laughs> well, it's early. it's early. Coach Jimmy Johnson conferring with one of the officials, upset about something that transpired on the field. He, of course, came to Miami from Oklahoma State and a couple of weeks ago experienced, I'm sure, the toughest game he's ever been involved in as a head coach when the Hurricanes squandered a 31-point lead. On first down, here he comes throwing again. He's still perfect on the afternoon. Throws to his running back, Ken Bell, coming out of the backfield. You can't double any of Boston College's receivers when they're spreading the wealth around. Again, we, here's Ken Bell who's going to catch his second ball here today. Earlier, he caught a screen pass. This time, they're sending him down the field. Uh, once more, the protection's pretty good. And it's funny, you watch Doug Flutie, he has an interesting way after he throws the ball, he gets his body out of the way. He rarely takes a hit after he throws the ball. And also, I think it prevents him from getting injured as well. Strahan, now is set in front of Bell. The Eagles come out of the eye, and Flutie moves the pocket himself to the right, and there, it's complete. On the deflection, I was all set to say there's his first incompletion, and Martin makes the spectacular grab. Well, Doug Flutie surprises us all, Brent. Don't believe me. Doug Flutie make, makes you defend the entire football field. The f first quarter, he's been dropping back. This time, it's a naked bootleg pass. He gets trying to get the ball to Calvin Martin that is tipped, but Martin has the instincts and the ability to make an adjustment and come up with a big catch. The point being, Flutie makes you defend the entire 53 yards of width. His younger brother, Darren Flutie, is now flanked to the left at the bottom of your screen. Hands the ball off. And bolting up the middle was Troy Stratford. First down for the Eagles. This is the, only the second run we have seen from Boston College. We promised you a lot of offense, and believe me, that's what you're going to see it. When you're passing the ball as well as Boston College is, you're going to have some success running sprint draws and draw type of action. Troy Stratford, who was a question mark today with a hamstring injury, he means an awful lot to their offense because he has the capability, Brent, of going the entire distance. But there they used him wisely after a series of passes by Flutie. First and ten, the ball is at Miami's 20. Complete again to Stratford. Five more yards. You can see the problem that there's a real dilemma for the Miami team. How to handle this guy Flutie as we talked at the top of the show. They, they attempted to blitz or bring pressure one time, and that's when they ran that little draw in there. But it's awful tough to handle a guy like Flutie. Too much versatility. You're in charge of stopping him to make today. Oh, well, well it isn't <laughs> over yet, Pat. Give me a chance. We'll hold him under 50. All right. <laughs> Second and five. He is 10 of 10 and averaging better than 10 yards of reception. Thrown for one touchdown already. Now it's 11 of 11. Stratford's got another first down at the Miami 5. I think one of the, as Pat pointed out, uh, Brent, the protection has been superb for Flutie. And here he is, 11 for 11. How do you like that? You can't even do that in practice. I know Hayden couldn't. <laughs> You're right. I couldn't do it in warm-ups either. But the interesting thing is Miami has chosen just to rush three and drop eight uh, arrow. Maybe they're going to have to try to put some pressure on him. Ken Bell is the tailback. Casparilla in motion. This is Bell sweeping to the left. Going for the corner on the second BC touchdown. Not 
shouldn't be any doubters, Sarah, about the performance of not only Flutie, but this Boston College football team now, the way Coach Jack Picknell has built a power in the East. He's done a remarkable job, and this, these were, uh, that was two excellent drives on the part of the Eagles, but I'm wondering right here whether or not uh, Miami is still shell-shocked from that Maryland game. Kevin Snow adds his second extra point. It's 14 to nothing. You know, when you have to defend the run, you have to be a little bit more aggressive. But the problem with playing, playing Flutie is that he makes you play soft because he throws the ball so doggone well. But here they come right down by the goal line with Ken Bell off tackle. Their offense has the power to run the ball off tackle, yet they can finesse you. Doug Flutie drops back and finds that open man. We'll be back at the Orange Bowl in a moment. What about Miami's defense that time? Well, as you'll see here, number one, the circled player is the contained man. They get outside the contain. One of the things when you're playing football, you've got to squeeze everything back to the inside. He gets blocked clear there, as you see, has no chance, and he gets outside the leverage. But two no beautiful, one. excuse me, two beautifully executed drives by the Eagles. Unbelievable. Time left in the first quarter here in the Orange Bowl. Flutie has handled the ball twice and has scored both times, and Miami does not have a yard of offense yet here in the opening quarter. J.C. Penny and Daryl Oliver are set deep for snow. Oliver runs up, fields it at the seven and fumbles. Picks it back up and stepped out of bounds near the 20-yard line, about the 21-yard line, and here comes Kosar. Big day tomorrow. I want to remind everybody that the road to Lexington starts on CBS with the Louisville Cardinals taking on Indiana Hoosiers, coached by Bobby Knight. And of course, at halftime, we'll get an update from Frank Lieber. And the two fellows with me in the booth uh, know a little bit about yeah. this rivalry the Fighting Irish against Whew. the Trojans. That's going to be a good one, too. Huh? Coming after you, Hayden. <laughs> again and again, huh? It's been a long time, but we're coming after you. <laughs> I understand. Here's Kosar. First down for Miami. He hands off to Bratton, and no daylight. Met right there. Mike Ruth was one of the defenders, number 68. And if you get an opportunity, watch the big nose guard from Boston College. He's one of the finest nose guards in the country. He wants to become a priest, but he said he may have to slow that up for a time while he plays a little professional football. Benches something like 550 pounds. I hate to arm wrestle him. You see the size of his arms? <laughs> Who could you arm wrestle? <laughs> <laughs> Oliver, to the 25-yard line, where it'll be third and seven for Kosar. Well, Miami, Miami wants to obviously keep the ball out of Doug Flutie's hands. One way of doing that, of course, is by controlling the ball, controlling the clock. But really, Brent, that is not Miami's personality. They are a throwing football team. We've seen them try to run the ball here twice in a row. They've only picked up three yards. That's exactly right, Pat. They've got to keep the ball away from that explosive Boston College offense. They're dynamite. Brown is to Kosar's left. There was movement in that offensive line. Now Boston College is complaining bitterly because they don't think, yeah, there it is. Well, this is one thing Miami's been penalized 84 times coming in to today's game. Now, if my mathematics is correct, that's almost eight times a game. It's an awful lot to overcome, particularly when you're down by 14 Another points. procedure, lineman moving against Miami. We're going to play third down. Paul Schmidt, our referee with the call. Third and 11 for Kosar, and Eddie Brown, the dangerous one, is set out to Kosar's left. They double the two men on the outside. Complete to Brown. At the 45, midfield, and steps out of bounds at the 42. He's so dangerous after he catches the ball, and that was a 37-yard game. Boston College deployed into a jam position. You see the wide outs. They're trying to double up on him. But Kosar got an awful lot of time to throw the football. Brown gets into the seam, the deep seam. Look at the hole in here. Kosar has enough time. Great catch by Brown. Not only that, he can run with the football. Yeah, Kosar is explosive as well. And here they come. Boy, he picked up two nice blocks by his wide receivers there, one being Stanley Shakespeare. 
Pat, there's a first down for the Hurricanes now at the BC 41-yard line. This is Oliver. And the defense led by Chuck Gorecki, number 95, closed down. You know, we, we talk so much about Doug Flutie, you don't realize how good Boston College's defense is as well. It's a very good defensive team. They put some pressure on people. They played a big league schedule the last few years and done very well. They have their stiffest test today, I believe, in Bernie Kosar. Sets it up beautifully in the screen. This is Platten. Gets down to the 30-yard line for a first down. That second effort by Platten earned Miami the first down. Romanowski, the linebacker, finally brought him down. Football is very much a game of momentum. Boston College had it, but Miami now is trying to get it back. And one way of doing it is throw, throwing some short, safe passes. They felt that Melvin Bratton is a very good receiver. They want to get him the ball out of the backfield, both on screen passes like this, as well as downfield. But the momentum here is now in Miami's favor. As soon as Kosar turns his back on the defense, Boston College said they're coming with the delay. And that time they read it perfectly. They said that Kosar will never turn around and throw back at you once he shows you his back. And here you can watch the linebackers looking in to try and read. There is the turn. And that's when they're taught to close in. Ruth quickly moving over to cut off that seam and the linebacker pressing in for the right-hand side. Good defensive team. Complete, and it's Brown again working the sideline. But he is short of the first down, and over there was Tony Thurman. Brent, just as, as Boston College came out, as we said, and they were going to change formations and throw the ball around, so is Miami staying true to form and trying to throw the ball early in the football game to its wide receivers. This is the second or third time he's gotten the ball to Eddie Brown, this time on an outcut. It looks like he did pick up the first down. He got one foot in, or actually got two feet in. He did Very a beautiful job of getting that first down, Pat. And when Eddie Brown has the speed that he has, you obviously have to respect him deep. He saw him catch 137-yarder, and that allows you to throw those outcuts. BC 18, fumble, recovered by Kosar. Remember, that's a defensive scheme that Boston College wanted to use. Mike Ruth on the center, Sinclair. They felt they could back him up into Kosar, maybe create some exchange problems between Ruth, uh, the center, the nose guard from Boston College against Sinclair, the center for Miami. One of the problems also for the defense on both sides is that they can both grab big chunks of yardage. Yardage, just because it's second and ten now doesn't mean anything, or third and ten. They can grab it in a hurry. Brown is to Kozar's right, and Stanley Shakespeare goes to his left. Movement again, and penalty flag comes down. the right guard move, right guard or right tackle of the Hurricanes. Well, you're right, and this, as we mentioned earlier, uh, Coach Persigian, Miami's had a problem with this all year long, came in with 84 penalties. <laughs> officials are saying... The defense is and the offense came up. No fair. That's fair. It's Thanksgiving weekend. Yeah, right? Offsetting penalties, I guess. It's unusual in that situation, Coach. <laughs> That's right. Change that rule so that the burden goes to the offense. Any kind of movement there. Jack McNeil is not sure that he understands <laughs> it. <laughs> I know I do. <laughs> Second and 11 for the Hurricane. On the reverse, it's Eddie Brown, and he's got daylight. 15. Inside the 10. First down for the Hurricanes at the six-yard line. Oh, he's explosive. A 13-yard in the round. A very 
very nice change of pace by Miami. We've seen some off-tackle runs. We've seen Bernie Kosar drop you back into the pocket. Now they get into scoring position, and they put some more pressure on you. They give it to Eddie Brand Brown, the man with outstanding speed on the outside. Look at number 50, Mike Moore, out there in front of him. The interesting thing to me, Brent, was the Boston College team feels that they can run a lot of reverses against Miami's defense, but they turn the tables here. This does not Miami strong suit the running game. As a matter of fact, they're only averaging 121 yards a game compared to 307 passing. They can get the big chunks of yardage, but down here they'll probably try to pound it in here. But they may miss Alonzo Highsmith, who was injured in the Maryland game, and he was their big running back that got that short yardage. Let's see whether or not Bratton can get it. He is number five. the right tackle helped open that hole and then Bratton did the rest by going over the top and extending his arm on into the end zone and this is Greg Cox Ooh, he got a little ricochet on <laughs> yeah. uh, that one but it counts just the same well, Aaron, Mer Melvin Bratton answered the question about Highsmith's injury because he did get the tough short yardage here and over the top. Pretty good penetration there by BC, but a tremendous leaping ability that allowed Bratton to break the plane of the goal line. But the BC defense really guessed correctly. Watch them shift to their left. They're expecting Bratton to go that way. You're going to see him shift, move back a little bit. But Bratton was too tough over the top. Very good offensive line surge. The result, touchdown. Flutie's turn coming up. Errol, what about the BC defense? Did they let down after going up by two touchdowns? No, not really. I think one must, have, must face the fact that these two teams, when they play, average about 900 yards in a contest. Right now, the first quarter isn't even over, and they're up to 227. They're just two great offensive teams. Seelig to kick it off for the Canes. Williams and Taylor are back deep for the Eagles. One of the short men fields it in front of Williams and gets back to the 18-yard line. And a reminder that at the conclusion of the game, Pat and Aaron and I will select a Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each of the teams. And Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of both Miami and Boston College. And there is a penalty flag down. a personal foul against Miami. I believe that's their fourth penalty here in the first quarter. And as a result, Doug Flutie and BC will come up to the 35-yard line. Flutie is 11 of 11 in this first quarter. And he's already passed for 118 yards as he closes in on still another record. Fake to Stratford, moves to the left, repositions a receiver, and hits Gieselman. Out of bounds, no completion. Bernie Kosar, who directed Miami to its first touchdown, has pulled them to within seven. There's the pass distribution. We've talked about that so much here at the top of the show in the first half. Look how he's, Flutie is spreading the ball around. That's what makes them difficult to defend. And then after he's thrown the ball around to a number of different people, they run a draw or a trap, and you've got a halfback in the defensive backfield. That was his first incompletion in the game. Stratford and Strahan are set behind him in the eye, and Flutie will sprint out to the right. 
to Martin, incomplete. Brent, the coverage is a little bit better in this series of downs for the Hurricanes. I think they're getting more familiar with what Flutie does and where the receivers are coming from. They did make a dramatic change in the coverage of their underneath people, the linebackers and the outside backers, along with the strong safety. Hadn't done it for a number of weeks. Here we take another look at the entire defense. You can see the coverage is much better here. Of course, he slipped and fell right there. I didn't realize that. I guess that was uh, Callahan, or Calhoun that slipped and fell, number two. Third down and 10. His brother, Darren Flutie, was the motion man on the right-hand side. Incomplete. And for the first time this afternoon, Doug Flutie is stopped. Daniel Stubbs was the defensive back. I told you my defense would come through. <laughs> <laughs> You're finally getting it going, aren't you, Coach? Hang it in there. <laughs> Seven, Boston College leading Miami. Steve Peach. A quarterback on this BC team will punt. No one plays much quarterback except number 22. That's Eddie Brown. Steps out of bounds there at the 30-yard line. Well, he is quick, and you can just tell that when every time he gets the, hand, uh, the ball in his hands, that he's good on the dance floor. Uh, he reminds me of my own youth. Ah. <laughs> uh. Here are the bowl games coming up on CBS. The Sun Bowl on December 22nd. That'll come your way at 3 p.m. Eastern time. And then the Peach Bowl on December 31st at 3 p.m. And, of course, the big one, the Cotton Bowl, which will bring you Boston College against probably Texas. But they still have to beat Baylor and Texas A&M. Now it's Bernie Kosar and Miami going back to work trailing B.C. 14-7. He'll throw on first down. Time. Brown. Down to the 48-yard line, covered by Todd Russell. But if you give him that much time, Brown will pull away. All right? Just too much time. Absolutely too much time. Boston College cannot stay with Brown that long. This is Bernie Kosar's version of his scramble. We've seen Doug Flutie scramble around a little bit, but he steps up into the carpet, pocket, buys himself a little bit more time, and you both said it. Eddie Brown is so quick that even though he had double coverage on him, he was allowed to find a dead spot, an open area. Kosar delivered the ball. They get off another play, and it's the delay with Bratton to the 47, and that will bring the first quarter to an end. It's 14-7 B.C., and we'll return after this commercial break and a word from your local stations. As if on cue, the sun has started to peek through just a bit here in Miami. This is the brightest it has been all day down here. It's rained hard. And the lights have been used to help the players see down here, and of course, this is the scene of a Monday night game coming up between the Dolphins and the Jets, and they use PAT turf, and we'll see how it holds up the wear and tear after this game is over. This is a second and nine, Miami trailing BC, 14-7, Bernie Kosar dropping back to put it up again, complete to Bratton. almost took away a first down when he dipped back, but I believe he picked it up. Here are the two quarter stats. Look at the yards passing. We promise you an offensive show. They're going to continue to throw the football throughout the whole football game. Turnovers, even though bad weather conditions, they have not turned the ball over. A pretty even first quarter. I think also the important thing was that Flutie was able to drive his team for two scores into what wind we have, the swirling wind. He will have the wind with him in this second quarter. They are going to measure. And Bratton's inexperience showed in that sequence. He had the first down. Then he dipped back to try and pick up more yardage. And when he tried to get back, they cut him down just that short. Bernie Kozar's also had a very good first quarter. I'm certainly not disappointed with either one of these. Different styles, but they both get the job done. They're not getting to him either, are they, Pat? Not putting much pressure on him. You're right. Short yardage formation by Kozar. And it's Bratton for the first. 
first down. Fumble. And it goes out of bounds. Miami's ball. David Pereira was over there for BC, but he could not get a handle before it went out of bounds. So often on short yardage, if the first, if the back can get through the initial wave, and here he get, picks up a nice block and gets outside, and then really tries to run over Pereira, the ball does pop out. The BC players are there to try to make the recovery. Didn't have possession before he went out of bounds. Actually, didn't have possession at all. That was number 36, Peter Holy. But a first down for the Hurricanes. After that 16-yard gain, Ball is inside the 25. And on first down, they run off tackle to the right side. David Thomas made the stop on Warren Williams, who has checked in. Surprised that Miami actually has run the ball a little bit better here uh, in this last couple of drives, Era. It's Very not very effective against that defense. They were trying to blitz Kosar and anticipated a pass, and it was a good call. Williams. First down inside the 10. Again, it was Peter Holy. They're really making it tough on the defense because Kosar is mixing it up. They've been principally a passing team. They're deployed to stop, to come in and put a heavy rush on Kosar. Look at the blocking. Look at the hole. They're making it very difficult on the Eagles. They're making it tough on me defensively. <laughs> and the other thing they're doing is they're keeping Doug Flutie on the bench. defense you know that Mike Ruth is down there someplace on that stop <laughs> it's a pretty good guess but they have not been able to get to Kosar we expected Ruth to be able to get to Sinclair but I and Sinclair number 76 the Hurricane Center is doing a pretty good job on him because they have not sacked Kosar pressured him maybe a little bit once or twice <laughs> Smith the tight end and he drills him for the touchdown. scored two touchdowns and now Greg Cox adds the extra point and we are tied at 14. Bernie Kozar can throw different types of passes. He has different types of touch. This time you're going to see him absolutely drill the ball to his tight end Willie Smith. Remember this is the man who came into the game with 62 receptions. Here he tries to get the ball. Kozar does outside first but he's double covered so then we told you he's going to get the ball to his tight end Smith. Smith is a marvelous athlete and you're going to see the height He's 6'2", but he jumps up and makes a terrific catch. He's got very large hands. That's the difference. We may score 150 points here before last, we go. Last guy who has the ball, right? Back at the Orange Bowl, and you can see how quickly Kosar took the Canes in for their second touchdown. Selig kicks it off, and again it is fielded by one of the short men, and he is brought down at the 27-yard line. Let's take a look and see what happened. The circle players, number 17, Tony Thurman, the leading interceptor in the country with 10. But watch as he makes a mistake, and he moves to his right. Kosar reads it. You see, he should be center fielding here. And Kosar drills the ball so fast and hard in there, Thurman cannot get back. And that is a touchdown. Almost the same mistake that was made when by Miami when uh, Boston College scored. Doug Flutie. Brings the Eagles to the line of scrimmage at the 29. Throws on first down. Incomplete, and the ball should have been caught by Ken Bell. 
Tara, you just mentioned uh, the same mistake being made. That's what happens, though, when you throw the ball around. We saw uh, Eddie Brown catch a number of receivers from Co number of balls from Kozar to allow that tight end to get not get as much attention. But, you know, the thing about it, Pat, is the very thing that both coaches talked about defensively was to avoid the big play, stay in a three deep, give him, give him shelter. But they've been burned twice, each team. Comes back to the other side. Complete. And that time it went to his running back, Bell, and he held on. Reggie Sutton was the corner, but not until Bell had picked up 17 yards and a first down for the Eagles. When you watch Doug Flutie play the game of football, you always have a smile on your face because he's always going to do something like this. Here, you can't, this is just athletic ability. The impromptu play, it's very difficult to defend. You're going to have some defensive br uh, breakdowns. He has a marvelous knack of finding open receivers. The outside linebacker, Cortez, did not contain. He dropped back into coverage, and of course, that gave Flutie that opportunity. They run on first down. Stratford up the middle, and that is only the second time in this game that BC has gone to the run on first down. And a big round of applause as the haze starts to lift over downtown Miami. Someone upstairs wants to get a better view of these two guys as they move up and down the field here. You're right. Look at the all-time passers as they entered today. Of course, Flutie on top now has that chance of going over the 10,000-yard mark. It's pretty good company. Second and one. Stratford banging for another first down. It's amazing what head coaches at Notre Dame can do. The weather, I mean, it's just remarkable to me. <laughs> well, I want Look to at that sun off of those gold <laughs> helmets down there. That's Doesn't right. love it? <laughs> This is not going to be a defensive battle, that's for sure. <laughs> when did you figure that out? <laughs> you want to go out and When you guys like gave me the defensive responsibility. <laughs> Ball is at the 42 now on first down. And right out to the side, it goes to Stratford. Out of bounds inside the 35, but there's a penalty flag down. Boy, Troy Stratford had a bad hamstring coming into the football game, and you can really saw the, the effects of it there, Brent. He just always could not really take off on that leg. Again, let's take a look at Troy Stratford. He has not practiced all week because it was so cold up in Boston. Now watch him. He just can't really, you can see him limping there a little bit. He's trying to get out of bounds. Whap, he takes a hit, pushes him out of bounds. Dallas Cameron knocked him out. We must not be sure either. That's the gentlemen who are huddling down there, trying to get this infraction straightened out. Gonna bring in one more, I think. For maybe they'll just take a vote. That's the democratic <laughs> way of doing it. Well, here we come. We're gonna get it. We got a consensus, I think. Go <laughs> All that, uh, huh? Uh, oh my. Uh, <laughs> oh boy, Johnson is really heated. This guy's just one little air time, I guess. So it's a first down for BC and Doug Flutie. The ball is at the Miami 30 yard line as they pick up 10 yards on that last play. Ken Bell replaces Stratford. He's the tailback. Flutie sprints to the left, outruns the defender, and picks up seven or eight yards. Kevin Fagan was moving in on Flutie. And he just accelerated around him. 
and got out of bounds. Shades of Francis Tarkenton on that one. Oh, you're right. But you have to play a very disciplined defense when you play Doug Flutie because he can do that. They, how many times have we seen Doug Flutie run that naked bootleg play where he fakes to a tailback or a, on a sweep and then gets outside containment and makes all sorts of good things happen? Barry Gallup, he's the offensive coordinator for BC. Very close, the man who recru recruited Doug Flutie. Stratford is back at tailback. Throws a beautiful block to give Flutie some throwing time incomplete and almost intercepted. And Kenny Calhoun was the defender for the Canes. Amazing thing about both quarterbacks today is they have not thrown many interceptions. Good coverage this time as you see Ken Calhoun, number two, will get right in the perfect position. It looks like Flutie's got his receiver right there. He almost intercepted the ball. Good coverage on the part of Miami. And Era, there's a penalty against the Hurricanes. And a first down for the Eagles who are inside the 20-yard line. As a result of that infraction, and Coach Johnson is getting more and more upset by the minute. He's trying to figure out how to stop this ball club, and no one else has done it, Jim. You're just going to have to outscore him. They'll go to one running back in this formation. Strahan. Off the left side on the slant to the 15-yard line. Bruce Fleming, linebacker for the Canes, one of those who applied the hit. It'll be second down for Flutie. The ball resting on the 15-yard line. Casparillo, the BC tight end, is set to the right. Stratford is back. Stratford. A bit as he got inside the 10 yard line. Has to get to the eight for a first down, and Calhoun brought him down. It'll be a short yardage formation sent in now by Coach Jack Bicknell and the Eagles. I think it was last week when they got hooked, got hooked up with Syracuse in a really a tough ball game in bad weather conditions. Boston College demonstrated that they can run the football when they need to. But the versatility, of course, of Flutie gives them a tremendous dimensions in both phases of the game, running and passing. You're right, Eric. I think it surprised an awful lot of people. BC ran for, what, 270 yards last week against a very good uh, Syracuse defense. Exactly right. one for Flutie and the Eagles. This is a situation where they like to give the ball to Strahan over the top. He's been very successful. Interesting, Pat, because they switch him to the tail. Fake him that time. Flutie wants to throw it and gets past Fagan, has the first down, and I think he dove for the touchdown he did. <laughs> he is <laughs> remarkable. <laughs> How do you defend that? You know, Pat, forget whether or not he can ever play in the NFL. You and I were talking about right. that this morning. He is a great college football. All the talk is about whether he can play professional football. That's not the point. It's irrelevant. The point is he's one of the greatest college football players of all time, the most exciting player that I've, I've ever seen, and that's what's at issue. He may or may not have a successful pro career, but that's what now we're concerned with today. Kevin Snow to attempt the extra points for the Eagles. And they've jumped right back into a seven-point lead. I mentioned that on short yardage, Boston College generally likes to give the ball to number 33, Steve Strahan. And here he does. He fakes it to him over the top, and Flutie is out on the corner again. This is a very dangerous place for Doug Flutie to be defensively. Shows some strength. He breaks the tackle there. He knows where the end zone is. Good block by Kenny Bell, 24, sealing up on the defensive back. Back at the Orange Bowl in Miami, where the Boston College Eagles have just come back and regained the lead on the Hurricanes of Miami. And that's the time remaining in the first half, and now it is Mr. Kosar's turn to go to work against that Eagle defense. 21-14 in the first half already. J.C. Penney is back deep with Daryl Oliver. 
This is Penny. Out to the 18-yard line. You know, from a coaching perspective, I think that I would have wanted Flutie to throw the ball to Ken Bell. Number 24, you see how open he is right there? Right there is Flutie, number 22. Now he runs the ball, and you take a risk. You take the risk of an injury. Now, Flutie is a great runner and a tough little guy, but why take the risk? He could have thrown the ball to Bell. Those coaches always want to take the fun out of it. Don't they? I, know. It's I mean, much I want more, to see yeah. the guy dive in yeah, the end zone. Yeah, right? I'll tell you what. Yeah, but Ken Bell wanted the ball. <laughs> First hour's turn for the Hurricanes. First down. Off the fake to Williams. He draws time. And he has got Stanley Shakespeare all alone. A coverage mistake inside the 40, the 35, and down to the 32-yard line. Stanley Shakespeare and Neil Eiton finally brought him down after a 49-yard gain. Kosar to Shakespeare. Brent, when you said coverage mistake, you're absolutely right. Remember all the balls that Eddie Brown, number 40, has caught today? Well, here's what happens when you start getting concerned with Eddie Brown, the other wide receiver, the flanker, number six, Stanley Shakespeare. Now, there should have been a linebacker or somebody there in the middle of the field to try to take that away. There was nobody there. There was a big hole. And Kozar, again, with the eyes, he always has the vision. He finds the open man on the field. He spreads the ball around, too, as well. And he has hit seven in a row after missing his first three passes today for a total of 100. 143 yards. There's that deep drop. He sets the screen with it. And there's Bratton. Bratton breaks a tackle and gets to the 25-yard line. David Pereira, the strong safety, brings him down. He's three yards short of a first down. But you have to like the play selection by Miami. They'll go downtown, come up with a big play downfield like we saw to Shakespeare. Then you're concerned about that. The next thing they do is come out and throw a little finesse at you, a little screen pass after you're dropping deep to tr try to take away the big play. Good play selection by Miami. Sweep to the right for the first down, steps inside the 15, and then takes on a defender inside the 10, and Bill Thompson finally brings him down. 17-yard run by Bratton, and now the Canes are knocking on the door again. The last team to handle the ball may win this, and speaking of handling the ball, it's the season premiere of NCAA basketball on CBS tomorrow. It's a good one. 1 p.m. Eastern time, Louisville, coached by Denny Crum, against Indiana and Bobby Knight, and we'll hear from Frank Lieber at halftime of this game. We'll be there covering for us tomorrow. Here it is, first and goal for Kosar and the Canes, and he'll put it up. Touchdown, Miami. Warren Williams out of the backfield. I want to tell you, that is one fantastic catch and throw. I thought I had an interception. <laughs> It was very close. What a job Kosar did there. He got that ball in there. I don't know how he got it there. Greg Cox hits this extra point. It'll be 21 all with 7.38 to go in the first half. And that's what it is. Boston College's defensive game plan was to drop back and play coverage. And here you're going to see what happens. You're going to give Bernie Kosar a little bit too much time. They have a four-man rush there, but they can't get to Kosar. He's looking for receivers. He buys himself a little bit more time and really throws off balance and still was able to get enough on the ball and a beautiful catch by number 24, Warren Williams, out of the backfield. This drive saw a lot of different type of plays, a big pass play to uh, Stanley Shakespeare, a screen pass, and now the big catch by Williams. The ball is being teed for Mark Selig as the official wipes it off one more time and set back deep Tyrone Taylor and Steve Williams with Bernie Kosar throwing the final eight yards of that drive. He was three of three for 64 yards. So he passed for 64 of the 81 yards. It's about to be Flutie's turn again. This one bounds out of the end zone. It'll come out on the 20-yard line. 
Brent, this touchdown is an almost, almost. As you watch Chuck Gorecki come from the right side of the screen, almost gets to Kosar. Watch him come right here. He has plenty of time right there. And almost now, Todd Russell almost knocks the ball down. But it was too well executed on the part of the offense. Defense wasn't that bad. A lot of almost on his defense. <laughs> well, I said, that'll get you beat, won't it? A lot of almost. <laughs> Here's Doug Flutie with his fifth possession. He has three touchdowns and one punt, as does Bernie Koso. Stratford is the tailback. They'll throw again on first down. Complete. And that's Gerald Phelan. Doug Flutie's roommate and his favorite target at BC. Era, you really have to enjoy the play selection by both these coaches, both these staffs. Again, we talked about them spreading the ball around. Phelan catches his second pass today. Both quarterbacks are doing a marvelous job of getting the ball to backs and getting the ball downfield, change of paces with some screen passes and some draws and traps. And also the beautiful quick release that Flutie has. Flutie needs just 11 yards now to pass 10,000 yards passing. Hands off that time to Stratford, who was brought down after a yard game. It was a celebration if you stop him for one play. I was about to say, <laughs> those defensive coaches are terribly excited about that. Williams checks in at tailback, and they right away flank him out to the left. Strahan, the lone running back behind Flutie on this second down. Complete to Martin. A beautiful catch at the 49-yard line. And that gives Flutie... 10,008 yards passing, the first college quarterback to throw for more than 10,000 yards in his career. The coverage is not that bad, as you can see here, but Flutie just drills that ball. It's a great catch, but the defense is not that bad. It's good offense. They're favored to pass on first down, and this time they'll go to the run with Troy Stratford. Well, I'll tell you what, not only have we seen great quarterbacking here in this first half, but we've seen some remarkable catches there. We just saw one by Martin. But remember, we saw a great touchdown catch by Williams and Eddie Brown's come up with some great receptions as well. Well, of course, Sunday afternoon on the NFL, there's a doubleheader on CBS. Philadelphia-St. Louis is the big first game. The two second games are San Francisco and New Orleans and Chicago against Minnesota. The Bears can wrap up a divisional title if they win. This is second down for Flutie, and there was a penalty marker down, and the whistle had blown before the play began. Illegal procedure. That is Jack Bicknell signaling the formation. Now, that is not the play he is sending into Flutie. Martin delivered the play from the sideline to Flutie. He comes off, but it is the coach who will give Doug the formation. This is a very complex offensive system that BC uses, and we see Doug go to the shotgun for the first time. Martin, fumble. Miami's ball. Bruce Fleming and Tolbert Bain responsible for that turnover. This is what Miami was hoping for. Try to force Boston College to throw the ball underneath in front of the coverage, come up and be able to rally around the football, cause a couple of fumble recoveries or perhaps interceptions. But watch how Flutie's allowed to step up in the pocket and drill the ball right on the numbers to Martin. And then he tries to secure the ball, but Bain, number 18, strips him of the ball, and there's Fullington to make the recovery. You can see here how wide open he is. There's a big hole right in here, and of course, Flutie steps in, makes a great pass, but there is the kind of defense that you need. Good contact and a turnover. And the first turnover in the game. Ben Kosar will throw on first down. Danny Brown inside the 40-yard line as he slid into the 37 with a completed pass. 
Bernie Kozar said, and we said at the top of the show, he wanted to get the ball to his outside receivers. He's done that here in the first half very effectively. Many times to Eddie Brown and, of course, to Shakespeare as well. This time, watch how he drills that football low and away. There's no way that ball is going to sail on him and get picked off. Eddie Brown, again, finds a dead spot right in front of the safeties. 24-yard gain, and Kozar has completed 10 straight. run Bratton. There's an alley on the left. Out of bounds at about the 27-yard line. Era, you and I were talking about this earlier in the week. Can you remember in a college situation a better matchup between quarterbacks? I don't think I've seen this kind of matchup. As a matter of fact, in my day when I was coaching, if you met one or two great passers and maybe in a 10 or 11 game schedule, that was about it. But today, these passers and receivers are so skilled, I think it's put an undue pressure on the defense. You cannot stop these teams. I don't know how you can with 11 people Well, you know, you're there. absolutely right. I think 10 years ago or so, when, when I was playing and you were coaching, the, the defensive coach could rely on a quarterback to make a bad throw or overthrow a receiver to disrupt a drive. But nowadays, as you said, they're so skilled, they're just not going to miss those throws. Time left in the first half. Do you know that seven of 11 times this year, Kosar has thrown for better than 300 yards? He's a remarkable performer. Very nice young man, very bright. He sends Bratton into a slot for the first time on this first down. BC's ball. Number 50 of Boston College, David Thomas. He turned the ball right back to Doug Flutie in Boston College. Just looked like an audible by Kozar. He was going to run the ball here. And B Bosa, number 97, really stripped him of the ball. And there's number 50, David Thomas, to make the recovery. But both teams have turned the ball over to opposing quarterbacks. Tied at 21 here in the first half of the Orange Bowl. Jack McNell and the Eagles go back on the offense. 4.54 to go. Asparilla in motion. Flutie flushed to the right. Throws a completion to Phelan. He has run out at the 42 by Sutton. You never quite know where Doug Flutie is going to end up. This play was designed for him to drop back in the pocket and try to find a receiver. But again, you cannot defend the impromptu play. He can't find anybody right there, so he turns and spins. And he's got the quickest and speed to get away from a rush, and that's what gives his receivers like Phelan an opportunity just to find an open spot. There was no contain on the left side, and that was the big problem. It allowed Flutie to come back to the outside. You've got to keep him squeezed in. Second and one. Here's Stratford, has the first down. You know, one, have the ball at the 45. One thing, Era, that I've noticed against BC, what I would try to do a little bit, I think, with Flutie, is really give him some inside rush. We've seen Flutie step up into the pocket a couple of times and hit the, hit the receivers over the middle. I would like to see him get a little bit more of an inside rush so he doesn't really have so many so much open area. It's a very good point, Pat, and I think you got to contain from the outside. You can't let him scramble out of the pocket. They have been void of a contained man. He immediately senses it, feels it, and takes it. They run the delay and get nowhere. Stratford, the ball carrier that time. And there's a penalty flag down in the secondary. You know, Era, talking to the BC coaches this week, they really felt offensively they could run a number of reverses against this Miami defense. You just led me to think of that, too, because they are voided, void on one side. They're not containing. That's what they saw in the films and felt they could run a reverse to those sides. And dropping those outside linebackers, and exactly, if they run a reverse to the side where that fellow's... what Doug has done so far 17 to 21 for better than 200 yards one touchdown he has run for a second that's a day's work for 98 percent <laughs> of the quarterbacks in the game for Doug Flutie it's not even a half's work he's got four minutes and 33 seconds to go 
and he's a week away from picking up the Heisman Trophy. And he's taking on a young man who's going to be a serious contender next year, and that's Bernie Kosar. On the delay, Strahan bangs back to the 40. But that'll leave the Eagles with a second, and 15 is Bruce Fleming, number 58, who has been very active at that linebacking spot, mirroring Doug Flutie in this game, and he has come up with several big tackles for the Canes, although we certainly don't want to stress too many big tackles in this game. <laughs> it's 21 all in the first half. Ben, I I'll tell you, if I were to go into pro ball, I wouldn't hesitate to take Doug Flutie as my quarterback right now. Do you have an announcement for us? Uh, <laughs> no, you no want announcement. Okay. <laughs> I just tell you, I take it. <laughs> Flutie to throw it on second and 15. And Victor Morris. Now here's the thing. A big yeah, you're right. And Doug Flutie is sensitive about because of all the uh, talk about his height about getting balls batted down. Now lots of quarterbacks get passes batted down. Bernie Kosar has had his share as well. But here he just gets pretty good protection. Remember these guys are pretty large. And it did get tipped there, but it's going to happen to any quarterback in any any tip, uh, given game. Particularly short ones like yourself. Uh -huh, thank you, Eric. I appreciate it. What was the score of that Notre Dame SC game a few years ago? 51 to nothing in 1966, uh -huh. sir. Uh -huh. That's the wrong year. I'm talking about 74. Flutie to throw it, and there's penalty flags down on both sides. Incomplete. Miami appeared to be offside prior to the snap. There's the formation sent in by Jack Picknell. See what the flapping wing <laughs> indicates here. <laughs> it means, yeah, throw a pass and get at least 15 yards, Doug. <laughs> he is came to BC from Maine, and he has done a remarkable job. Boy, is he fun to be around, too, isn't he? Super guy. Kind of a coach that you'd like your son to play for, I'll tell you that. It's the best compliment you can give anybody, I think. Balin in motion. Flutie flush to the left. He'll keep it. Diving for the first down. It's going to be very close over there. The intelligence of Doug Flutie, Pat, when he saw the yardage marker and where he had to go, Era. Everybody drops back. On a man for man. You can't see Flutie here. He sees it all. No contain again. Nobody squeezes him and he takes the ball and runs with the football. He reacts perfectly to the circumstances as they occur. Can't defend the impromptu play of Flutie. You know, Coach, you uh, defend some interesting quarterbacks, George Myra and Roger Staubach, similar type guys to, to Flutie. What did you do against them? I think you got to bring guys hard from the outside, squeeze him in, and bring the people from the inside, Pat, to keep in his face if you possibly can. Drive him back. He gets outside. He's so dangerous. He can both run and throw on the run, and so accurately. Well, that's how close he came to picking up the full 15 yards for the first down. As he dove, of course, he fumbled the ball out of bounds on that far side. Looks like Boston College is going to go for it here. They are six of seven this year on fourth down plays. Let's see how Miami deploys there, whether it will come to a goal line defense or not. Strahan and Stratford are the running backs behind Doug. Stratford for the first down. 3.20 on the clock. BC has all three timeouts remaining as well. Dom 
Dombrowski checks in as one wide receiver, along with Darren Flutie, who is Doug's younger brother. That's him at the bottom of the screen. They'll run on first down with Kenny Bell, and he is stopped and thrown for a loss. Calhoun was coming up from the secondary to help out on the play. Jones hit him first, and it'll be second and 13. Coming up at halftime, we'll have a live report from the Louisville, Indiana game. Frank Lieber is there. Pat O'Brien interviewed Jerry Faust, the Irish coach, and we'll also hear from Lindsey Nelson on the echoes of college football. Second and 13. To Phelan. Out of bounds at the 26-yard line. Tolbert Bain with the coverage. 2.18 to go and another first down for the Eagles. We said at the top of the show, BC does it by different formations, trying to find soft spots and fooling the defense. There they brought in four wide receivers, Brent. And then again, Doug just picked the open man. That time he found Phelan. He makes it look so easy. That's the thing about it. From up here, just his arm is so quick. He delivers right on the money. Looks easy, but it's not. It's a skill that he has. Throwing again on first down. Drops it off to Stratford. Inside the 20. Ball will be spotted at about the 20-yard line. Here, watch Doug Footy after he releases the ball. This is one way, one reason he has stayed healthy in his four-year career at BC. He's going to release the football and jump away from the defender. Wap, that's a smart kid, I want to tell you. He's been doing that all day. He avoids a lot of punishment that way. You see the size of his hands on that ball? Very, very large hands. For a guy 5'9 and 3 quarters? Now you got it right, 3 quarters. Here's his second down. Incomplete. That one was intended for his younger brother, Darren Flutie. Doug Flutie's pass intended for Darren Flutie. Incomplete. Third down for the Eagles and a minute 29 left on the clock here in the first half. Well, they're keeping the, the officials pretty busy, too. <laughs> the way they stretch those defenses and all over the field. They're doing a good job. Middle is clogged. Comes to the right. Steps out of bounds at about the 10 yard line. Another first down. I want to tell you, if anyone is at home watching without a smile on their face when they're watching Doug Flutie, they ate too much bird yesterday because this guy is an exciting player. Again, he can't find anything. He's just going to make something happen. And again, no containment from the outside. Era, you have made that point a number of times. He breaks containment, picks up yet another first down. You know, one of the directors of the Cotton Bowl, Jim Brock is here, nicknamed a horse. I think he's enjoying this performance by Doug Flutie. You'd like to see a lot more of it on January 1st, I think. He says, if I see Doug go down in a heap and get injured, I'm going to run out there and jump on the stretcher myself and take his place. I don't blame the Hoss. <laughs> Here's the first down. Flutie. Wants Dombrowski back about a yard on the right-hand side. That's what he was motioning for. Deflected and almost intercepted. Incomplete pass. And that was Jerome Brown, number 98. Well, this is what you need. Somebody to knock the ball down. Number 98 is six foot two, 255, a sophomore, has great speed. And that time he was able to deflect the ball. Let's take a look at the coverage. Here's another shot of it. Flutie comes back. He's directing traffic. He finally decides just to dump the ball off right there, and it's deflected, knocked down. Almost could have been intercepted right there. Here's second down from the 10. Strahan trying to get running room to the left side. Battle to the 8-yard line. That 
that's a player the Eagles can ill afford to lose because of an injury. They have been decimated at that fullback position this year. Right, Jim Brown, their backup fullback, has been hurt. Jim Turner's, their third fullback's a little bumped up, too. So Strahan is very strategic in their game plan. An interesting call there on second and 10, though, to run the draw play. I expected there to be a little bit more open, but when you're down in this part of the field, there's not as much room for the defense to drop back, so a draw play is a rather surprising call. The end zone, and it's complete for the touchdown. He hits Gerald Phelan. <laughs> well, you're not defending him very well, Coach. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I thought we had it done that time. I thought, but he gets the ball there so rapidly, and also it was a great catch by Phelan. That ball was thrown low. Take a look at again Doug Flutie a third down situation he's come through his entire career again he breaks containment there's nobody there from the outside the ball is really deflected there by number 58 Fleming and that's why the ball was a little bit a little bit low for Phelan and Tolbert Bain almost got there a deflected pass by a linebacker results at a touchdown Kevin Snow adds the extra point for BC you've got 28 seconds to go in the first half Doug Flutie is now 20 of 27 for 238 yards and two touchdowns. And here's one of those touchdowns right here, a play-action fake. Again, he's got very good protection. And you're going to see, we're, we're smiling watching Doug Flutie, but he's pretty happy about things as well. We'll be back at the Orange Bowl with Boston College ahead 28-21. Can Bernie Kosar score in 28 seconds? Well, Brent, he did it against Florida. He had 36 six seconds left in the game against Florida, put, put his team down and brought them down for a touchdown. So the answer is yes. <laughs> Here's Snow's kickoff for the Eagles. Daryl Oliver, J.C. Penny are set deep. Penny at the five. about the 18-yard line. Watch here is number 20, Phelan. He's the end man on the line now. And number 18, Tolbert Bain is singled on him. He puts a move on him, breaks to the inside. Tolbert can't quite get there because Flutie gets the ball there, and it's a great catch by Phelan. Tough to single up against these guys. That tackle on the kickoff was by tight end Peter Casparilla, who has been playing quite a bit here this afternoon because Gieselman has difficulty with an injured thumb, so they have been alternating. He delivered the lick. Now 23 seconds left for Kozar and all those talented wide receivers. Goes to Brown. Out of bounds at the 37-yard line. at halftime we're going to be talking about tomorrow's game our season premiere the road to Lexington Kentucky in the final four it's the Cardinals of Louisville against the Hoosiers of Indiana and that will be followed by Notre Dame and SC got a couple of folks in the booth who've got some passions about that game and we'll talk about it at halftime here's Kozar pulling out a lot of time dumps it off incomplete BC had three defensive backs standing back on the 20-yard line. They were not going to let Shakespeare and Brown get behind them. Well, I'll tell you what, their coach, Jack Picknell, would be very upset if they did. He has nine seconds left. He's got three timeouts. Obviously, he has to get the ball downfield a deep way to be able to get the ball in field goal position. Bernie had completed 11 passes in a row before that incompletion he comes over to the sideline and while we've got a break here in the action let's take a look at these two campuses BC and Miami and those two universities also have these two fine football teams Bernie Kosar and the Hurricanes of Miami with just seven seconds to go in a half trying to come back against BC complete to Brown inside the 30 Stopped at the 19-yard line with time running out in the half. 
Thurman was on the coverage. There will not be any time left for the Hurricanes to attempt a field goal after that 45-yard game. Well, it was only nine seconds when the ball was snapped. It wasn't quite enough time, but Bernie Kosar did the best thing he, he, he could do. He was to be able to get the ball to his big play man, Eddie Br Brown, hoping that he might be able to break a tackle or make something happen. But good, safe defense by Boston College, number 17, Thurman there. to get some help from some teammates, and that's it. And we'll return to the Orange Bowl after this commercial break and a word from Ooh. your local station. Oh, jeez. 